from sponsored zero three by the looks of things. So uh, number two, I think number maybe. two. Yeah, and that was the one that started. Uh, Johannes van Overbeek, one of the two extreme motorsports uh, HPDs. You see quite a lot of incident at this corner as they come down off the banking. And uh, that has gone around on him and come across the grass backwards. And luckily, it's just engaging gear and should be able to rejoin this race. Ooh, he'll need a new bit of, a bit of body work. There. He seems to be dragging a tyre to the fix. And Patrick Dempsey back to the pits to give himself a lecture. Almost taking the nose off the car, he's already parked and I'm sure he judged that to, to perfection. But it's that sort of bus stop section that he's often catching that one or two cars out. He obviously if you clatter the curves a bit too much, there is the risk of a spin and now the number two car can rejoin right after the delta wing uh, with bits of bodywork falling off there. So there's certainly going to have to be uh, rear bodywork reattached to that. Hopefully solved for his be easily, although more of it being ripped off over the grass there. The Rolex 24 at Daytona is sponsored by Rolex, official timekeeper of Daytona International Speedway. By SRT, we are SRT, street and racing technology. And by Continental Tire, innovative technology, driving confidence. Welcome back to Daytona, the 52nd Rolex 24. We'll give you a look at our leaderboards, the top 10 at each of the four classes. Now here's a problem for the extreme speed HPD Honda powered car got it wrong in the chicane. I said earlier really on this would cause a lot of trouble before the night was over. Big hit on the tire roll on that right rear tire. I believe this car had just hit it, so maybe it was just a cold tire situation. Pulled the driver out. Half a lap away from the, from the pit lane, and it looks like it might have a broken toe link on the right rear. You see how it's dog walking down the. Yeah, he's hurt the right rear suspension. But I'm sure they can fix that. They'll have all that stuff, Calvin, on pit lane. They will. It's all about being prepared for this type of disaster. And uh, the team that can respond. Here we see another oh, problem here. The infield. The first place car in PC. Third and seventh place, says the leader light. Don't see any damage on the body. Could have been just a simple spin, but that's not a good place to go off either. It's downhill off that corner. He's racing behind the wheel right now of a Trans Am champion. Been a pretty good regular in this class of competition for the past few seasons. Had a few victories. Now there's been. Oh, wow, that's the sister car. This is not the same car that was grabbing into the mid lane. Now I'm this thinking maybe. Another ESM machine. I'm thinking maybe we got some oil down situation out there or something. Two of them going around. Right, that's Scott Sharp. He is a very, very experienced champion in any number of different formula. There must be something on them. Yeah, there's something at the entry of that uh, corner that's catching these guys out. You can see what yeah, they won't rev. The engine won't rev. That could be a broken... Uh, these are fly-by-wire cars, so it could be the final position switch. Maybe that's what pulls the spin if you don't have that throttle response. Oh, boy, this could oh, be We saw one of the GT Daytona cars having to take... Evasive action around the outside in the grass. Scott's got damage on the right front corner of the splitter. I don't know if he got into it with someone on the entry there or what happened. Oh, he saw a champion.